Hey guys, Eric KJ4YZI with a video tutorial on the new Sane Sonic AP510 APRS tracker. Uh, tutorial on how to get the Windows files that you're missing uh, loaded on your computer as well as configuring the software, getting the software to work, and upgrading the firmware on the device. So when I got this I had a lot of problems and uh, there's people on the Yahoo group that also had problems that were trying to get help so I figured a video tutorial may solve everybody's problem. Uh, what I did was if you look in the description below this video I included a link that will take you to a Mediafire page where I have uploaded all the files that you'll need. You can get the files on the Yahoo group also but I figured if uh, you didn't want to register for the Yahoo group or whatnot all the files are available online here. So in this list when you type in the link or copy the link in your browser You'll have all the files here. This is the prolific driver for your uh, inst your USB cable for the drivers in case Windows did not install them automatically. The two files that you might be missing in Windows when you try to run the software, it gives you an error telling you you need these files. As well as the update tool for the firmware and the INI that goes with it. Uh, the firmware here, the latest firmware, is a hex file. And the number in the front represents the date on these. So you'll see July 3rd, 2014, February 18th, 2014. All right. Go ahead and click this check here and download all these files to a folder that you'll know where they're at on your computer. In this case, I chose Downloads folder. All right. Here's all the files. So the first thing you're going to want to do is if you're running the AP510 configuration software and you're having an issue, let's get these two files loaded in your Windows first. So what you're going to do is copy both these files and go into your local disk here, the hard drive, find your Windows folder, and go down to System32. And if you're on a 64-bit version like I am, you'll see SysWow64. You want to copy both these files into each one of these folders. I already have them, so it's going to ask me if I want to copy and replace, and I'll do that for this demonstration. All right. And we'll go back to the SysWow64 folder. We'll put those two files in there also. All right. Now you have those. Go right in the same window. Go back up to find the command prompt. It should say CMD right there. All right. Easiest way to do this is to right click on the command and choose Run as Administrator. It'll take you right to the command prompt with the folder that you're in. Very easy. And this is what you're going to type. SVR REG backwards. REG SVR 32 space in the name of the file. MSST DFMT dot DLL and press enter. Should say succeeded. When I did it the other way through the start menu and running command prompt and changing directories, uh, it would give me a message that said the, the file was loaded but not successfully registered. This should work for you here. And you'll do the same thing for the next file. REGSVR32 space MSCOMM32.OCX. Enter. Succeeded. All right. You've got both the files loaded. You can go ahead and close this down. You won't need this anymore. Close your Windows file or folder. And uh, go back into where you downloaded all the files and run your AP510 config software. This is how it should look. Now, previous versions had uh, Chinese lettering and stuff, and it didn't look anything like this. Um, it looked similar to this, but you couldn't understand half of it. So this is how it should look, and uh, you want to connect your device. How do you do that? Well, another problem people were having. With the device turned off and plugged into your USB port, in the bottom here in the config, you should see a drop-down box, and you should only have the COM port associated with your USB cable in here. If you have multiple COM ports, you're going to want to see which COM port is associated with your USB cable. In this case, mine is 3. I'm going to click 3. And now I'm going to click Read Config. And when I click this, it's going to start counting 1 through 20, looking for the device. When it does that, pick the device up, hold the red button until it beeps, and you should see it says Read Successfully. If it doesn't the first time, go ahead and shut this off. Click read again when it starts counting, hold the button, turn it on. There you go. Okay. All the device uh, parameters loaded. 
You can choose your call sign up here, your path, your status, and your comment. Your transmit mode, which is uh, the difference with this is manual is only beacons when it push when you push the red button here. Automatic is every 30 seconds in this case, or whatever you decide to put in the delay time. And smart beaconing is when you're driving down a straight road in the same direction for a long time, it's going to beacon less frequently. And when you start making a lot of turns and changes in direction, it's going to beacon more frequently. So smart and manual is what I usually set mine on. Uh, also down here, the frequency for transmit, national APRS frequency is 144.390. You'll notice there's an extra zero. This will not load if you don't include that extra zero. You have to put 3900. Or in, if you're in Europe, 144.8000. Okay, if you try to do just 390, it's going to give you an error. All right, so you have all this programmed in now. You go ahead with this device should still be flash, uh, fast flashing the blue LED. It means it's in program mode. You want to go ahead and click Write Config. It should say Writing, then it should say Successful. Done. If it doesn't, you can try it again and it should go. If you're still having an issue, you can go ahead and exit the program, turn the device off, and start over. All right, when it's done, I can click exit. This is going to beep, and it's saved. Now, I know I don't have an antenna on here. I understand that. I'm just doing this for a demonstration because the antenna wouldn't fit under the camera where I have this. I understand I'm supposed to have an antenna on there. Um, so you have that config. Now you want to upgrade your firmware. Well, turn the device back off. The device always has to be off when you start a process. All right, device is off. Now, what you want to do is, is click on the AVRTT update program. This is going to open like this. And if yours is in Chinese here, it may be the previous version. Uh, you can click on the language and choose English. Okay, but it's going to show you the a different message here every time, just a little funny quote every time it'll be a different one so first thing you want to do is again your device is off you want to click option and go to COM port and make sure that your COM port is the one associated with your USB device so in this case minus three you're gonna leave the rest of these uh, parameters here alone and click OK now you've already downloaded the hex file which is the firmware latest one so go ahead and click file load and point to that directory where you downloaded those files and click on the latest hex file here. Click open. You're going to see hexadecimal code load here. That means that's the file open. All right. And what you're going to want to do is with the device off, click on operate and then download. Now, when you click download, it's going to start counting, looking for the device. And at that point, you hold the button, but keep holding the button while the firmware writes like this. And it starts counting. Pick the device up and hold the red button. Don't let go. You'll see here on the bottom it says connect success. It's showing the package data and the bar over here and it's going to stop when it's finished and beep. There it is. Let go of the button. It'll beep. Successful. Okay. You just wrote the firmware to the device and all is done. So you can go ahead and shut the device back off. Close this program and open your config software again to make sure that this still connects. Choose your appropriate COM port here. Click read. It starts counting. You're going to want to hold the button again. There it is. There's all my information. Okay. So everything seems to be working fine. I loaded the latest firmware to it. And here's all my information so I can go ahead and start using this. I hope this video solved a few problems that a lot of uh, people were having. You can also check on other my other videos uh, that I'm making right now on what this device is, what it does, uh, what APRS is, what you can use APRS for, and using this device as a KISS TNC for packet radio as well as RF email, emails over uh, handheld radios, and connecting it to APRS Droid. So um, this is Eric, KJ4YZI. Thanks for watching. Please comment, and I'll see if I can help you out with any questions. 7-3.